Hey everyone, Carl here with Literate Lessons bringing you a deep dive featuring Kyogre and Solgaleo. Uh, we're going to try something new this week and kind of just focus on the team building aspects of these two rather than look at just random sets and uh, gameplay footage. Um, overall, I think uh, getting you guys ready for team building situations with the upcoming return of IRL events is much more important. Um, I personally will be going to Indiana in May, as long as COVID and everything is willing. So yeah, uh, before we get started on that, make sure to hit that like button, ring the bell for notifications for when new videos go live. Go check out the merch page linked below somewhere. Um, we got our beanies approved, so we have those now. Um, we have plenty of stickers. If you're coming to Indiana in May, seek me out. I will be there and I will have stickers. Um, they are a limited supply, so first come, first serve. Uh, but yeah, let's just start with Sogaleo and Kyogre here. So what is, I, if you listen to the podcast on M Monday, yeah, this is what the Monday um, before, I ragged on Sogaleo hard. Uh, I think this Pokemon is terrible. Um, Zacian does everything it wants to do without being super committal, like with Dynamax and whatnot. And I think that um, you really, really, really have to know your ins and outs with Sogaleo. It's it's not beginner friendly, but is beginner friendly, if this makes sense. Um, what this duo does best is kind of just puts it out there showing your opponent I can do this or I can do that and I'm going to do one of these two things and you have to correctly identify which one I'm going to do um and what I mean by that is there's a very good like fast mode with Kyogre and a very clear slow mode with Sogaleo and what happens is good players will build their teams to where their Sogaleo can operate in both in both axes um Personally, I like weakness policy the best. Uh, you could play Lumberry, Life Orb, whatever. Uh, I think weakness policy is just the best one because this allows you to be more bulky and invest in speed without having to sacrifice a ton. Um, I think there is a perfect speed number as well for Sogaleo, and I think it's like 139. Um, this lets you outspeed Reggie Eleki with Tailwind. Uh, this puts you at 278. Um, it means you don't have to invest a ton into your uh, attack investment because you just blow everything up anyway because you're going to be at plus two. Um, it lets you put more into your defenses and have to worry less about taking hits all the time. So definitely look at doing maybe something like this, hitting that 139, getting a good HP and defense stats. You'll have to do your own defensive calcs to figure this out. I'm not going to spend two hours doing calcs for you for your Sogaleo, uh, but that's a, probably a very good starting point, making sure you pick up KOs at plus two, so on and so forth. Um, pairing with that Sogaleo, we've seen things like Mimikyu, or we've seen things like... Um, like other trick room setters. I like Mimikyu a lot. Mimikyu Solgaleo works a lot like Calyrex Mimikyu, where you kind of just get to set up trick room for free. Um, another option I've seen here lately is getting into the follow me and redirection part and just setting it up with your own Solgaleo. Um, you don't think about 139 being a crazy, like crazy slow good trick room speed, but if you look at the format and the way the format's developed, Anything faster than you is probably fairly common. Um, like, Zacian's going to be faster than you. Yveltal, faster than you. Landorus, faster than you. Um, Kyogre, most of the time, faster than you. Groudon, maybe not faster than you, but that's what you have Kyogre for. Like, so playing this Trick Room game, like, you would, playing it like a Kali's uh, Ice is really, really strong, I think. You can do like Earthquake and then Stun Steel Strike. Uh, both those two those two moves alone hit the majority of the format fairly well. Um, and then maybe look at doing like uh, Wild Charge or Stone Edge or Fire Move. Like you get like Flare Blitz. I've seen I've seen Crunch. I've seen Close Combat. I've seen Psychic Fangs. I've seen a ton, and there's just so many options for this last coverage move. I feel like that you have to uh, 
respect all of them at the same time when you're playing against uh, Solgaleo. Uh, for purposes of this video, we are going to probably go with like Flare Blitz or uh, Stone Edge, mainly because being able to hit uh, certain Pokemon in the format, i.e. Zapdos, is really, really important. So you want something like this, or if you can make sure that you like your max lightning is going to KO, you can do something like that. Uh, speaking of your partner restricted Kyogre, so there's some cool things you can do with Kyogre here. We can do the standard Mystic Water set, be super duper normal, consistent, and kind of boring. Um, I like Scarf sets when I'm playing with Silvaleo, mainly due to the fact that I'm not maxing this thing. This thing will probably never die to max. Uh, as long as Sogaleo is in the game somewhere. This is my Dynamax target almost 100% of the time. So I treat this as just a very fast, hard-hitting Pokemon. I'll get rid of that vocal runner for a second. Um, and so this is where we get into the fun times of trying to do speed math and get all your calcs correctly and whatnot. Um, this is a situation where I like 140... Uh, is it 149? I think 149 at plus 1 outspeeds uh, Calyrex. Yes, it's 149 because 150 is 225. 149 should be 223 and a half. So it rounds down to 223, which lets you outspeed everything. Um, so this will outspeed Calyrex Shadow 100% of the time. Uh, you do max special attack. You can do a couple points here. Boop. Boop. Just put them like that. Boom. Done. Sets ready to go. Choice scarf's really, really powerful. Um, do like water spout, ice beam. Um, you could do like icy wind on this set instead, since you're not maxing it. Have Kyogre be like the secondary speed check for your Sokaleo, which is really cool. Uh, thunder, obviously, because you have rain, 100% accuracy. And then, uh, so this is where it's gonna get weird. I don't like Origin Pulse on Scarf. I think being locked into Origin Pulse can be bad. Um, I would rather be locked into Scald. And I think it's part of me has been, get, has been got by Wide Guard too many times. And or uh, getting got by like misses from Origin Pulse. So having extra like an extra move, water move that's just 100% accurate 100% of the time is just a safety net for me more so. You can play Origin Pulse in this last slot and you'll probably be fine, but this is just personal preference for me and I like playing Scald. Um, so with these two here, we cover a lot of the format. Uh, we cover Yveltal really well, we cover uh, Zacian fairly well. Um, what we need is a way to make sure that we get to do our fast thing. And Tornadus is the perfect pairing for these two. So, Tornadus is cool because Tornadus is a ground immunity for Sogaleo. It helps your Kyogre just outspeed everything. It can activate weakness policy on your Sogaleo. There's just nothing that this Pokemon can't do. Um, so, what I like to do is I like to Focus Sash with these sets when you're playing like Trick Room style. And then you get to do Tailwind, Brutal Swing, um, and then Hurricane, obviously, for Stab. And then whatever last move you can want in that slot. Protect, taunt, whatever. Uh, since we are sashed and we're probably not going to play super duper bulky. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and put on protect. Uh, but obviously your tornado set can be whichever one you want it to be. Um, what I do want recommend is max speed timid. Um, you want to make sure that you are just outspeeding everything. Or at least speed tying opposing tornadoes. Uh, Swordfish or Sword Whale or whatever you want to call it is the most popular archetype and they will have their own Tornadus. So getting up your it's like you don't want to run into a taunt battle, right? Like you don't want to run if they're running taunt and you're not and they just try to taunt to win the 50-50 and you're at just happen to be slower. That's a bad thing. You don't want that. Um, so probably just do a good, good HP investment, good speed investment, put some defenses in. Uh, if you wanted to calc to see how much Hurricane does to, like, no AV Rillaboom, that's something you can run and check out and see what you can do with that. Um, same thing with, like, Venusaur. But definitely think, like, this three, these three are the are the linchpin of trying to get this stuff done. Um, on the back side of that, Mimikyu could kind of just be considered, like, the fourth, like, the tag-along Pokemon. 
Um, it completes your Sogaleo leads really well when you're trying to do Trick Room things. Um, seeing that you can do like, uh, where is it? Mental Herb, that's what it was. Um, you get like Will-O-Wisp and Safeguard and Trick Room. And then Shadow Sneak, which gives you priority ways to activate your policy. Um, Cause like, you don't want to bring Tornadus against opposing Cali Ice. That's just asking for trouble. You would much rather have your Mimikyu alongside your Sogaleo. So what this does is this allows you to have at least two or three different leads in four Pokemon right off the bat. Um, not every single one of these Pokemon have to come to every single game. But most of the time, you're bringing, like, Sogaleo, Tornadus, Kyogre. The snowplow just went by and scared the heck out of me because I thought the whole world was falling apart. Um, where were we? Uh, oh, uh, bring, talking about leads. Um, so when I mentioned earlier that, like, this team is great for beginners but not great for beginners, is your leads are really well defined. You know what your leads are. You know what your strong points are. The issue is, is your opponent gets to visibly see these all the time, and if they predict the lead correctly, you have to navigate the matchup really, really well. As for support for these guys, you have two big electric weaknesses in Tornadus and Kyogre, so you probably want a good way to check Reggie Eleki. Uh, again, like, Tailwind plus Solgaleo deals with that really fairly well, but you probably want something that's going to just, like, be able to switch in and eat a Thunderbolt or whatever. Um, so probably could look at doing something like Landorus, or, um, I'm not sure what other ground type or lightning rod users we could probably get away with here. I've seen Crocodile actually pop up a lot. This thing's really cool. Uh, unfortunately our scarf is taken, so we're not going to, like, be doing, like, crazy scarf sets. But, uh, if your scarf's not taken, I think Scarf Crocodile is hidden OP right now. Uh, you could definitely get away with playing this thing. It just blows Calyrex Shadow up. Uh, you have Intimidate. You get to hit Zacian really hard. Like, this thing's got a lot going for it. Uh, definitely keep an eye out for that in the future. Uh, um, uh, in the terms of, like, just, like, looking for, like, Lightning Rod, though, um, there's some pretty good options here. Uh, Marowak's really cool. Uh, I've been really high on using Alolan Marowak for a very long time, being able to just, like, body Zacians and check even opposing Sokaleos or Calyrex, uh, Calyrex Ices. Uh, and Dynamax, you eat an Astral Barrage and take it out in return. Uh, but something that's probably a little bit safer is just playing Raichu. Uh, this gives you Fake Out. Uh, alongside your like trick room sets so you could always just do like Sogaleo Raichu and fake out that way um, the one downside is, is you're not really getting the Dynamax target out of Raichu it's not the greatest when it comes to that kind of situation uh, so definitely would recommend doing like maybe Landorus is probably the better option here um, but overall it's just trying to find a way to have a good check into Reggie Eleki, something that you can kind of set up alongside and then deal with. Um, other things to consider are like Incineroar. Uh, having access to Fake Out is really big when you're trying to do the Trick Room thing or the Tailwind thing. Uh, I think Incineroar is really, really good. You could probably just do like Safety Goggles, Intimidate, Fake Out, uh, Parting Shot, Flare Blitz, and then whatever your fourth move you want it to be. I like Throat Chop. Uh, I've seen people running Taunt. I've seen people running Roar. Uh, Roar's really good at getting them like against opposing Trick Room. But Throat Chop, uh, since we don't have a good dark move outside of like Brutal Swing right now, I think Throat Chop is probably the better play right now. Uh, for our Incineroar, at least. Uh, I want to make sure that I'm also outspeeding opposing Incineroars. Um, so one of the things I've noticed is you can probably do like Jolly Incineroar. Make sure you get to like 113 and then just put the rest into your HP, 4 into attack, and then just pray that you just live hits. <laughs> That's kind of the situation we're in right now. Um, obviously, if you're not Sash here, Sash Incineroar is really, really cool. Uh, we saw it a lot at the tail end of Series 8. Um, you could just be like Sash super fast Incineroar. Um... And then lastly here, um, you probably want another good rain abuser. 
Um, you do struggle against uh, bulky waters. You don't have a good way outside of like wild charge and thunder. So maybe putting on a Zapdos is probably fine here as your last slot. Um, you have access to Assault Vest, which is really cool. This lets you play a bulkier Zapdos without having to worry about a ton of speed investment because you can just use Tailwind or Dynamax. Um, Hurricane Heat Wave, uh, Volt Switch, and Thunderbolt are probably your best line here. And then figure out your calcs from here. Again, 139 is the, 149 is the magic number for Caloric Shadow. Uh, if you're going to plus one, uh, obviously uh, 111 is the magic number. 112 is the magic number if you want to uh, just use Tailwind. So obviously you'll have to play around with your numbers, figure out what you want. Um, I like bulkier Zapdoses over the more traditional kind of uh, slower of the over the kind of just hard hitting ones so probably just like have enough special attack to where you're actually doing decent damage because you're not having you don't have life orb well you could do life orb i guess in this set uh we don't have life orb or anything else yet so yeah you could do life orb and then just do like protect and call it a day be timid or modest whatever figure out your set um I think this is fine. This is a very like dual mode team. You have a very strong rain core that's very visible. You have a very strong trick room core that's very visible. Kyogre fits on the trick room core. Sogaleo fits as the tailwind thing. There's a lot that this team can do. Um, and it's gonna come down to you practicing and getting better with the team overall before you try and run it down. Uh, before we go here, this thing, uh, Mimikyu. You don't need any attack investment in your Mimikyu. I'm going I'm to preach this to the choir right now. Stop playing Adamant, Brave, or anything Mimikyu. Play bold. Play relaxed. Play whatever you want it to be. Stop playing attack investment Mimikyu. Go max defense, max HP. Don't get got by Rillaboom. That is my biggest thing. Don't get got by G-Max Rillaboom. Um, I've seen it a ton. It just blows people up because it's no one remembers what G Max Drum Solo does. Because G Max Drum Solo negates this ability and just blows you right up through it. So, max defense, max HP. Put four in that special defense. You don't need an attack. You're using Shadow Sneak to literally break sashes and activate a policy. That's all you're using it for. So, stop investing in attack. Uh, rant over this team. This team will be uh, available down below if you want to play with it. Um, I'll I'll have fixed the EVs and whatnot by then though. So definitely definitely try it out. Take it for a spin. See if you like it. See if you hate it. Um, I'm not going to have time to play with this today, unfortunately, because we've rambled way too long about uh, trying to fit the dual modes into this team. But yeah, make sure you hit that like button. Ring the bell for notifications for when new videos go live. Uh, I want to thank everyone for listening to me ramble, and I hope you enjoyed this new deep dive format. Um, I think the whole PowerPoint presentation was getting kind of old and kind of boring, and being a little bit more active on screen hopefully will make these videos do better. Uh, if not, we'll have to go back to the drawing board and figure out what, what everybody wants to see. Uh, but yeah, make sure you hit that like button, do all that fun stuff, YouTube algorithm stuff for us. Uh, check out the merch page, get yourself a beanie or a shirt or a sticker or whatever you're looking for. And we will see you all next week. Bye, everyone.